I am Sebastian. Uh, this is a session on how proteins are translocated to chloroplast. We are aware that proteins are synthesized mostly in the cytoplasm. So there are very definite proteins that are supposed to carry out functions in the chloroplast. Uh, we are also aware that chloroplast has its own genome and it is capable of synthesizing proteins. A chloroplast requires more than 3000 proteins in order to carry out its function. About 95% of these proteins are synthesized in the cytoplasm. If you look at the genome of chloroplast that is capable of synthesizing about 100 and uh, you know it has 150 genes. Uh, about 40 proteins related to photosynthesis are synthesized in the chloroplast itself. All the other proteins must come from cytoplasm. We are going to look at how proteins are targeted towards uh, chloroplast. So all the proteins are translocated to chloroplast after uh, it is uh, synthesized. So in order to understand this, let us look at the structure of chloroplast. So chloroplast is a structure which looks very similar to the mitochondria. Uh, this has an outer membrane and remember the chloroplast is much larger than uh, uh, mitochondria. So the size of the chloroplast will be somewhere around 5 to 10 micrometer will be the size of the chloroplast. Um, so we have an outer membrane, we shall denote this as an outer membrane and this also has an inner membrane. So this is the inner membrane, that means it will have an inner membrane space here, inner membrane space. Look at the, the inner content. So this inner content is similar to the matrix of, uh, uh, of the mitochondria. This is what we call the stroma. Now inside the stroma, there are another kind of uh, uh, say, uh, membrane structures and these are called the, the granum, the granum which is made up of the thylakoid membranes. So this is the thylakoid membrane, thylakoid membrane and inside the thylakoid membrane you have a thylakoid lumen which means if the chloroplast has got three definite spaces. One space is the inner membrane space, if the second is the stromal space and the third is the lumen of the thylakoid. Proteins must be translocated to these three locations. That makes it all the more complex. As we begin to understand if the translocation of proteins to the chloroplast, it is translocated post-translationally. And the proteins that has to be translocated, the proteins must remain unfolded. And we are aware that uh, this is carried out with the help of chaperones, HSP proteins. So HSP protein 70 will ensure that the protein that is supposed to be translocated or remaining is unfolded form. So these are the HSP proteins that will keep the protein in unfolded form. Now every protein that has to be translocated to the chloroplast will have a signal sequence and the signal sequence is present at the end terminus of it. And this signal sequence what is observed is this is about 30 to about 100 amino acid. What is interesting about this particular signal sequence is it, the middle portion has several serine, threonine and basic amino acids. That is the characteristics of this signal sequence which is uh, uh, directing proteins to the chloroplast. Now um, similar to the mitochondrial mechanism this protein also has a translocator. So let us try to understand this translocator. 
uh, if you consider this is the outer membrane and this is the outer membrane this is the cytosol and this will be the inner membrane space the outer membrane has a translocator that is known as T, uh, out, TOC. TOC stands for translocon of the outer envelope chloroplast. So that is TOC. Now in the TOC, uh, let us represent the TOC here. So this is the TOC. If the TOC is consisting of uh, uh, three proteins, and it, therefore it forms a complex and the three proteins are there is a TOC uh, 34 and a third uh, TOC 159 these two are nothing but they are a kind of a GTPAs there is a third TOC that is TOC 75 that forms this particular channel so therefore this channel this is the complex is made up of these three TOCs a GT, two GTPases and a TOC75 which will act as a channel. Now um, let us also look at uh, the, the inner membrane. If this is what you consider in the inner membrane of the chloroplast, so this is going to be the stromal side. Now the inner membrane also has another translocase protein that is known as TIC translocon of the inner envelope chloroplast now this trans TIC and the TOC will be in closely associated in those locations where a protein has to be directly transported to the, the, the stromal side so what normally happens in the case of translocating this uh, protein remember the HSP70 will keep it unfolded now uh, hydrolysis of ATP so energy is provided by ATP hydrolysis this is dr driving this protein through the uh, talk and the tick and it is driving inside now here you can see that the protein is taken inside this has the sig with the signal peptide uh, it is also pulled inside with the help of another chaperone that is called HSP93. HSP93 will, will literally it is used for uh, assumed it is pulling the protein inside the stromal side. One important thing that we need to realize about uh, the transport into chloroplast is we need to compare it with the mitochondrial transport. In the case of mitochondrial transport, the energy for transfer comes in two ways. One, in the form of hydrolysis of ATP. Second, energy comes in the form of an, uh, an X plus electron motive force. And this electron motive gradient helps in pulling the protein inside, which is not present in the stromal side. This electron motive force is not present. This is where the HSP93 will play a role in pulling the protein inside and once this protein is inside what will happen is a peptidase, a chloroplast uh, signal peptidase will cleave the signal and now the protein is free and it will be folded and it will become a functional protein in the stromal side. So we have brought in a protein from the cell, a cytosolic side into the stromal side. Now we have seen when we looked at the structure of the chloroplast, we also spoke about the thylakoid membrane. So here is a thylakoid membrane, part of the thylakoid membrane. Now if this protein is meant for incorporating into the lumen or in the membrane of the thylakoid, how are these proteins translocated? What is observed is if the protein that is meant for thylakoid will also have another signal present. So it will have another signal and that signal is meant for the thylakoid. 
understand that this signal is not removed in the site of in the in the stromal site it is not removed it is still retained when the protein is in the stromal site there are three mechanisms proposed for either transfer of protein into either a thylakoid lumen which are these three different mechanisms so we will take up this figure up and then we will try to explain in the mechanism of transporting protein from stromal side into the thylakoid uh, so here is a protein we have the protein here and the protein is with the signal in the three mechanism the first mechanism is what is called a sec a mediated pathway in the sec a mediated pathway it is a protein this protein sec protein will create a kind of a channel so assume that this is the in the thylakoid this is the thylakoid in the if this is the sec a protein now the sec a protein create a channel and through this channel this protein is allowed to come inside once it is inside the signal will be cleaved off and the proteins get folded into a functional protein sec a also has the capacity to incorporate the protein into the membrane itself it can incorporate this is one way by which to transport a protein into the thylakoid lumen a second way to transport a protein to either thylakoid is uh, by using an SRP like mechanism the SRP like mechanism we have seen it earlier also as part of the endoplasmic reticulum transport so in the SRP that is a signal recognition peptide that also once it is recognized that also has a translocon and the translocone this is a signal recognition peptide recognizing and then this will allow if the protein to be translocated inside then if the signal is cleaved here also signal is cleaved and the protein gets folded now in the case of srp it also has uh, in the case of srp we have seen we spoke about an oxa protein and in the case of this srp there is a similar protein present that is called ALB3. This protein helps to understand, helps to fold the protein and gets associated uh, or gets integrated into the membrane. The ALB3 protein helps to integrate the protein into the membrane. This is the second mechanism. In the third mechanism for transporting a protein inside the thylakoid is uh, uh, what is called the TAT mechanism. TAT stands for uh, twin arginine translocation. So there are two arginine residues which are significant which are present at the signal site, which are present at the signal, these arginine residues will ensure that if the protein use the TAT mechanism, so that is the TAT mechanism is here, this will allow another translocation, uh, look on for identifying this arginine, then the protein is brought inside. What is important for us to know is, what is the energy? How energy is made available for this translocation? In all these process, energy is available in two forms. One is ATP hydrolysis. In the second form by which energy is available is the H plus, H plus electrochemical gradient. So now understand this is a thylakoid membrane. This is a place where ATP production will occur which means an electron motive force is generated here across this thylakoid membrane that is used in order to drive proteins into the thylakoid getting embedded in the membrane structure so these are the three ways by which 
protein meant for thylakoid is translocated. So we have seen in this small video uh, how proteins are translocated into the stromal side and in the elaborate mechanism that is proposed for the translocation of proteins to the thylakoid or how they are getting embedded or integrated into the membrane structure.